And welcome back to Who Would Win. And this is, again, the monthly Who Would Win. New year, new month. Let's start out with the monthly Who Would Win that we were continuing off of. The Espada versus the Akatsuki. And the way I've been doing this isn't individual fights. It's basically to figure out how the... Because there's one huge royale would be almost impossible to do uh, in terms of a video. Because uh, there's so many plausible possible outcomes. What I decided to do was pit the Akatsuki against uh, the Espada in one individual against the entire lot of the other, and they were basically just doing one-on-one -on -one bouts between them and seeing who's getting the majority of the wins. Right now, it's not looking the best for the Akatsuki. They've had Zetsu and Sasori uh, step up the bat, and quite frankly, uh, or excuse me, we had, um, wait, who did I start with? Did I start with Zetsu, or did I start with... Oh, I'm no, sorry. Sorry, I started with Hidon and Zetsu start up the bat. And then uh, they unfortunately lost. And then Saucer went up the bat, and he he got a couple wins. And so right now, they're not doing the greatest 3-27. to 27, But look, we got Dedera now. Dedera is from the Hidden Stone. He has a Forbidden Kinjutsu, which allowed him to mold chakra into objects, which is where the hands on his palms and his chest come from. At least that's the theory, anyway. But he's actually has an ability known as Explosion Release, which is a bloodline trait, which is apparently believed to be a combination of fire and lightning. Uh, interesting combination. Interesting that that's what you get when you combine fire and lightning. But what this does is he molds his chakra, his explosive chakra, into clay and creates clay creates bombs. He's a bomber. He's a, sewer, he's a mad bomber. He has different grades of them. His C, C1 to 0. 0 is actually the highest. C1 is just standard bomb. C2, it's a bit bigger. It creates a giant dragon to fly on, which basically makes giant bombs. C3 is just one giant massive bomb, which can level like the majority of a village. C4 is actually a giant in clone of himself that inflates, blows apart, sends microscopic bombs into the opponent... And when they detonate, they essentially disintegrate the opponent. If that doesn't work, he'll go to his ace in the hole, which is C0, and taking the, uh, basically, consuming all his clay into the giant mouth on his chest, and basically doing a uh, bomb so blast so big, it's like it has a blast radius apparently about 10 kilometers. So, Dedera, and Dedera is good, uh, uh, one of the Akatsuki members whose style of fighting keeps him at a distance, He's also quite good at stealth. He's got he's got great long range abilities for tracking. He's a, he was always considered to be a pretty powerful individual. So against the the uh, Espada, how does he fare out? Well, we need to break this down right now. Is that if this fight gets in close range with any of the Espada, Dedera's de de I think it's Dedera. Uh, I'm, I'm probably mispronouncing the name. Dedera is done because Dedera was. I mean, Dedera's got good reflexes, but. Against the Espadas, who are all trained, uh, well, maybe not trained, but all generally skilled swordsmen, uh, skilled hand, most, almost all of them are skilled hand-to-hand -hand combatants, can move at, at faster than sound, just because Sonido is translated into sound. So they're at least speed of sound, possibly comparable to speed, a light speed-esque feats, thanks to their Sonido, which is their super speed ability. Tougher, their har heroes are tougher, meaning iron skin. Uh, and they all have abilities that could just wipe the floor with Dedera. Dedera just doesn't have the physicality to keep up with any of these guys. So any victories he's a, he a t obtains, he's going to basically get uh, from the use of long-distance bombing. It's also going to be the question of, when dealing with a C4, they disintegrate little bombs that disintegrate inside you, or blow up and therefore disintegrate, and dealing with um, his giant C0... It's a question of, does the fight go on that long that he's allowed, able to use those techniques? The other problem Dedera faces against Dedera faces against any of these guys is the fact that all of his techniques require at least a little bit of setup, whereas most of these guys don't need that much time to set up their attacks. So let's, let's bring it down. Ayn Yero was the spot of number nine, the actual weakest of the group. He, when he released his sword and showed off his true ability, is this gelatinous jellyfish thing with uh, weird nipple eyes and teeth that are weirdly smiling. And he essentially, he's consumed like, uh, over like th thousands and thousands of hollows and taken on all their abilities, which, quite frankly, probably wasn't that many when you really break it down, how many hollows of that those uh, would have that many unique abilities. And that said, he 
could fire Saros, Saros, things along those lines, the air, their Doom Blast, Energy Blast. So he was definitely a powerful individual. But the problem here is that it's clear in in his base form he'd be have a speedy um he'd be speedy. But in his release form, which he'd eventually go to, I'm sure, he's actually just a giant mass of, bl of bl and ooze and just whatever. So I honestly think Dedero would actually win this fight. It would just be a matter of wearing it down, explosives, all that. Which, but I think he would do it. So that's actually a win for Dedera. So or Dedera, so good for Dedera. Then a spot on number eight. Now this one's definitely a lot trickier. Um. And I think the reason for that is all of uh, Sayalaparo's abilities, the spot number eight's abilities in his release form, which you see right here, are very weird. Like, he first can uh, spray out a liquid that can make copies of you. And uh, Dead would probably just blow those up, so that wouldn't be it. Because they don't have, the, like, his clay, I'm certain. Uh, but they would be copies of him, and he'd probably blow them. Then there's the Voodoo Doll ability, which... Would be dangerous for Dedero, but being a shinobi, that allow he does have the ability to substitute himself out of there, and he can make a clay clone, which would explode, honestly. So, frankly, or th that he can self destruct. So honestly, you know, he gets caught by this um, this wing arm tendril gooey thing, and you know he can just swap real quick with a clone, blow that arm up, and then if he really wants to, he could use the uh, as the fight's going on. He can use higher grades of explosives if Sialaparo uh, is still alive, which it's very possible. He's still very powerful. Then he would go for his ace in a hole, which would be um, C4, and basically would disintegrate him. So I do think he actually beats Sialaparo, too. And again, uh, when it comes to uh, Zomaru, Zomari, uh, this one, this guy's name I always never, I always forget, because he's probably the most forgettable. Um... Spot number seven, his shtick was he can take control of anything that his eyes, you know, gaze upon. So he puts a marker on him and he controls that thing. But Dedera can easily counteract that with a bunch of explosives that just, you know, take the effect and then, or get hit with the stamp from his eyes. And therefore he just blows it up and then it's taken care of. Uh, and then he can just, you know, bombard him with explosions after that. Which he can survive quite a bit, uh, Zomari, but ultimately he'd lose that fight. So right now, Dedero has got a good, um, good, um, uh, 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 streak going. Uh, but now we get, now, should note that all the Espada, in theory, can go into the air. They can basically walk on air. So Dedero being able to fly really isn't that big of an advantage. They can easily compensate for that. Um... And should be no Zomri is considered the fastest of the Espada, but I think um, that Dataras can use his tricks to kind of uh, circumvent that. The problem is once you get into these guys, though, these next class, Dataras starts to really fall behind in terms of sheer ferocity, uh, speed, power, durability, and techniques. Uh, Grim Jiao is just going to overwhelm Datera. Uh, Datera is not going to get a chance to use C4 because Datera, uh, because Grim Jiao, unlike uh, the, uh, a lot of these other uh, fighters we had right here, is a close range fighter. He, hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat is very much what he wants to be doing and he will tear his opponent to shreds. Uh, he can let giant energy closets rip across the sky. These freaking shoulder bullets that just pop out and can blow up pillars of these giant ass pillars uh, that are sticking out of Wake of Mundo, um, or Las Noches, I should say. It's, and speed wise, he can easily just close the distance like that. And like I said, all the Espada can pretty much stand on air. In fact, most Roncar and Soul Reavers can stand on the air. So ultimately, yeah, it's um, it, it's unfortunate for uh, Dedero, but that's going to be the first loss he takes. And it only gets worse from there because, again, Noritora, spot number five, his ability gives him enhanced regeneration, multi arms. Now he would be now he would be de harder for dead or, or to me. Dead would be harder for him to deal with because we don't see him like climb up in the air. I'm certain he can, but he's definitely more. He's also a close range fire, which means he has to close the distance. Unfortunately for Dead none of his lower end explosives are really going to do much. His Haru or his Iron Skin or Hero, uh, Hero. Hero, I think it is. 
his iron skin is too durable for any of the low-level explosives to really do anything. And then he's, he's just going to find a way to rush in close enough to get into close quarters combat, and dedo has got to dodge four to six blades all coming at him at multiple angles simultaneously. So, unfortunately, I don't see him beating Neo Toro. I don't see him getting to C4. The question really ultimately is, does Dedera get to C4? If he can get to C4, he's probably going to win the fight. But unfortunately, with any of these, especially Ukiora, Ukiora can move faster than any, uh, someone who moves at light speed level um, uh, speeds, like Ichigo, can react to. And this is just his first release. He's the only one who has a sex, second release that we know of. And that makes him even stronger and faster. Then add Energy Lance in they can throw at will. Enhance Regeneration, meaning he's probably one of the only Espada who might even be able to survive C4. Uh, ultimately, he's just going to completely overwhelm Dedera before Dedera even gets a chance to uh, to cause any explosion. Maybe cut his hands off and just kind of prove a point. Uh, then Hollybell. Hollybell, I'll give this. I think he could manage himself a little bit better against Hollybell, but we know for a fact she can walk on air. So that means she can easily close the distance. She can blow up any of his um, bonds with a Saru that she just uses as a, with a swipe of her blade. And she can manipulate water in giant, like, freaking lake-sized qualities. So she can easily overwhelm him. So I don't... And I'm certain she would not allow him to get any attack she feels would be dangerous to her off. Because once we get to these, like, the last four, they're very strategic... Well, okay, not last four, but these... The top four, um, they are very cautious, strategic and not easy to take advantage of. So he would seriously, um, uh, he, he would have extreme difficulty horrible. Not possibly going to be it, but I think ultimately she would win the majority of the fights. Bargon is the one who could just completely nullify a C4, because with his Respira, which just rots everything away, all of his own, we're running a low on battery, but almost done with this video, so we're, we're good for right now. Uh, okay, there we go. Um, with uh, with the Respira, uh, he can just rot any of the explosions, even the C4 away before he gets there. And ultimately, he would just disintegrate Dedera. So Dedera loses against Baragon, no doubt. Uh, Stark's another thing. Stark could just overwhelm him with Saros. That's it. And it'd be an interesting uh, thing to see him notice Stark's wolves that, you know, explode when they bite you. It's like, explosion, beautiful! But ultimately... There's, that's something that uh, he couldn't uh, counter is the the wolves. The wolves will just, even if he somehow uses C4, the wolves wouldn't be affected by that. And they're part of Kaya Stark's soul. So he can theoretically survive that as well. And then just, you know, barrage him with Saros and just wipe him out. And then there's Yami. Yami, I think, would just completely overwhelm his ass. Like, even if um, he tried to make a C4 doppelganger himself... I think Yami would just incinerate that thing with a Cero, just incinerating all the bonds before anything else goes down. So, and the anger he gets, the stronger he gets. So if he sees himself starting to dissolve, he might actually be able to hold himself together through his sheer rage alone. Yami is just a giant kaiju of an individual. So, ultimately, that's my thoughts on that. Again, except for the Sasori, he got three wins. So it's not, that's, out of the four uh, Akatsuki members, two of them got three wins. The other four just got swept. Um, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. I'll see you next time.